The ARC Prize is a new competition to surpass human-level performance on a very interesting AI benchmark called ARC AGI. And what's so fascinating about this benchmark is that it consists of these puzzles that are actually very simple for people to solve, but the current AI systems really struggle with them. There are many different benchmarks to test AI, but one of the things that we've seen over and over again is that a benchmark gets introduced and then within a couple of years, AI will be able to surpass human level performance at that. Now the creators of the ARC Prize, Mike Noop and Francois Cholet, argue that this is a very different sort of AGI benchmark because it doesn't test for skills and knowledge, but it rather tests for skill acquisition. What makes the ARC AGI benchmark so different is that it really requires the ability to acquire new skills based on just a few small examples. So it's not something that can just be simply memorized, like information off of a wiki page, or even some basic sort of functions. You really need to understand what's going on in these inputs, and then generate a new output for a particular test. As a result, it's been almost five years since the ARC AGI benchmark has come out, and AI has only been able to achieve 34% completion, whereas typical human level performance is getting about 85% of the questions correct. Let me show you an example of what these problems actually look like, and then we're gonna get into the details of what sort of solutions might work and why this is so challenging for the AI. Okay, so if we go to arcprize.org slash play, it's gonna show us a number of these arc puzzles, and they're all these sort of two-dimensional grids of colors, which is why this puzzle is so interesting because the data is actually very simple. It just represents a grid with axes and a certain number representing a color. And the expectation is that we have these examples and that we're able to generate a result for a test input. And by the way, there are two different test sets, one that is for training, and that is kind of easier, and then the evaluation test, which is a public evaluation test that is hard. There's also a private data set that they have to make sure that any models that people submit aren't actually just memorizing the solutions and haven't been trained directly on the solutions to this evaluation data set. But anyways, let's take a look at some of these puzzles. Okay, so in this first example, we got a few different colors, and then, I mean, it looks like this is a sort of pattern that's repeating. And in this case, it okay, it looks like it's flipping over on this second row, right? So that, is that what we're seeing in the second example? Yeah, we got that same pattern. Okay, it's right there, and then it, it flips over. Okay, so the output, we also see that it goes from a two by two grid to a six by six. So we're gonna need a six by six grid here. And we're gonna draw that pattern here real quick. Okay, so. Okay, let's just double check that. That's the right shape. And then it flips over. Okay, let's see if that's correct. All right, cool. So we got this one correct. Again, it was a pretty simple puzzle but this is the sort of thing that current AI systems really struggle with, and I'll show you that later in the video. Let's do, let's do another example. Let's look at this easy set and just skip around a little bit. Okay, let's take a look at this one. I, I, I think this one's pretty interesting because it's very different from the other example. Okay, we got this shape and a blue block, and then I guess it comes down to it. In this case, well, again kind of moves towards the blue block and similar here so it's almost as if this blue block has a sort of gravity to it where this shape is moving towards it right so if we use that same idea here let's okay and we'll erase that shape we'll put it okay it's going to move towards the blue block I think that's, I think that's right. Yeah, there we go, awesome. Okay, cool. So there are tons of these different puzzles and you can see like this one's pretty interesting, right? There's a different color outlining a portion of the picture and then we have to basically like zoom in on that fragment, right? So we're gonna take these blocks and that's gonna be our solution, like whatever is inside of this green square. But this is the kind of thing that does require some like abstract thinking. It's really hard to go from just simple data points 
to a solution here. You have to really look at these examples and really understand that context to be able to generate a response. Something that I find really interesting about this benchmark is that there is a clear, correct answer for every puzzle. So it's not something subjective like the SWE bench where you have to write some code that might satisfy an arbitrary set of requirements. Every ARC puzzle has a discrete answer and the data structures that are used to set it up are very simple and clear. So it can be really surprising to see that LLMs like ChatGPT can't actually do this very well. But let's put it to the test. Let's see how well ChatGPT can do with some of these ARC puzzles. So I took this example, which is like relatively straightforward. Uh, it looks like you gotta basically center all of these wherever the blue block is and then just you know move the red and yellow blocks to the right place so this is the solution and this is what the data looks like so we can just see representations of the whole grid and the colors that are found in each of the blocks okay so for this puzzle we are saying you are tasked with completing a puzzle which will include three example input output pairs and then a test input for which you must generate the output these data points represent colors, the numbers you see in the arrays, on a two by two grid. You must find the pattern of what is happening in each of the inputs and apply that same abstract approach to solving the test example. Here's the set of inputs and outputs. And then here is the test input. What do you believe the output should be? Okay, the output should follow the pattern identified and provided examples. You can observe the following pattern. Each color block represented by numbers other than zero the input grid is repositioned within the output grid, maintaining their relative position. Colors tend to shift to align vertically or horizontally within the output grid. Yes, that's true. Okay, let's take a look at this. Well, you can kind of see like that shape in this array, right? Because ones just represent the blue blocks right there. So it actually got this shape correct. You can see that blue block right here. But what happened here? Hey, look. We got two rectangles. Th this is what the Chad GPT solution looks like. So it's like way off, right? I mean, it's got at least the grid. It responded with an array, but you can see that the abstract thinking just isn't there. It doesn't really understand what we want it to do and the pattern that we see in these other examples. Okay, so ChatGPT doesn't do super well, but what if we just add scale? What if we add more data? What if we keep training it? Well, eventually it probably can actually solve these puzzles. But Francois on the Dwarkesh podcast made a really interesting point that any system, if you feed it enough data, is gonna be able to answer things if it is able to just retrieve that data from its knowledge base. So if you solve this challenge in a way that simply memorizes all of the answers, yes, that is a possible solution. But what happens when you create a new arc puzzle? It might actually struggle with that. So the heart of this challenge is really to create a system that is going to be able to see these puzzles and understand the actual intent and figure out how to solve it. Francois made a really interesting point about what sets this challenge apart, and this was featured on the Dwarkesh podcast. Check out the full podcast in the link below, but here's a clip of his explanation. If you look at uh, the benchmarks we're using for LMs, they're all memorization-based benchmarks. Like sometimes they're literally just knowledge-based, like, uh, like a school test. And even if you look at the ones that are uh, uh, you know, uh, explicitly about reasoning, you realize if you look closely that it's uh, in order to solve them, it's enough to memorize uh, a finite set of uh, uh, reasoning patterns. Uh, and then you just reapply them. They're, they're like static programs. LLMs are very good at memorizing static programs, mm. small static programs. And, and they've got this sort of like bank of uh, solution programs. And when you give them a new puzzle, uh, they can just fetch uh, the appropriate program, uh, apply it, and it's looking like it's reasoning, but really it's not doing any sort of on the fly program synthesis, all it's doing is program fetching. So I think this part is interesting because Francois does acknowledge that LLMs are able to generate things based on all of these different patterns that they recognize in their training data set. So we can indeed see some original things, but they're you know combinations of all of the different patterns that we see in the training. And he makes a distinction from that and actually having program synthesis where you are searching for a solution programmatically rather than pulling it out of your memory. So you can actually solve all these benchmarks with memorization. And so 
what, what you're scaling up here, like if you look at the models, they are uh, uh, big parametric curves uh, fitted to a data distribution, which I can't understand. So they are basically these big interpolative uh, databases, interpolative memories. And of course, if you scale up the size of your database and you cram into it uh, more knowledge, more patterns and so on, uh, you are going to be increasing its, its performance as measured by memorization benchmark. That's, that's kind of obvious. But as you're doing it, you are not increasing the intelligence of the system one bit. You are increasing the skill of the system. You are, you are increasing its usefulness, its uh, scope of applicability, but not its intelligence because skill is not intelligence. And that's the fundamental confusion um, that, that, that people uh, uh, run into is that they're confusing skill and intelligence. If you scale up your database and you keep adding to it more knowledge, uh, more program templates, then sure, it becomes more and more skillful. You can apply it to more and more tasks. But general intelligence is not task-specific skill scaled up to many skills. It, because there is an infinite uh, space of possible skills, general intelligence is the ability to approach any problem, any skill, and very quickly master it using very little data. Because this is what makes you able to face anything you might ever encounter. This is what makes... Uh, uh, this, this is the definition of generality. Like generality is not specificity scaled up. It is uh, the ability to apply your mind to anything at all, to arbitrary things. And this requires, fundamentally, this requires the ability to adapt, to learn on the fly efficiently. The only thing uh, that makes Arc special is that it was designed with this intent to resist memorization. This is the only thing. And this is the huge blocker uh, for LM performance. But why does any of this matter? What if we can solve the ARC AGI prize and we just have a program that's able to generate other programs and figure this out? Well, the thing is, if we can arrive at a system that can figure things out programmatically, we're going to be one step closer to AGI. It's not going to be the full AGI solution, but many experts in the industry agree that one of the missing components to AGI is reasoning and planning. And this is the capability that the ARC Prize seeks to actually create. We're already able to memorize a bunch of information and generate things, but it is very difficult to get the current AI systems to actually follow through on a plan and reason about what they're doing. AI agents currently are capable of this to some degree, but time and time again, we've seen them struggle to actually follow through on a plan or create a very effective plan, which is why we've had systems like AutoGPT around for a while, and now Devon is around, but these systems still struggle to execute on larger tasks, and that's because they just don't have very good planning and reasoning capabilities because those are actually missing components of the LLM architecture. Now, if we can come up with a new system that can augment that LLM system, I agree with Francois that we're gonna be much closer to AGI because we'll have systems that can reason and use their extensive knowledge base. Let's talk a little bit about the competition itself, what sort of limitations there are, and what prizes are on the line. So one of the important things to mention is that to get a prize, you actually need to open source the code that you write. So this is an attempt to get the community thinking about new ideas and pushing the frontier of AGI research. So if you submit a solution, you're expected to open source your code in order to get one of the prizes. Now the grand prize for the first team that's able to achieve human level performance at 85% success rate on the ARC AGI benchmark is $500,000. But the organizers of the ARC Prize don't believe that we'll actually achieve that level of performance this year, so the intent is for this to be an ongoing challenge. And there will be other prizes for making progress for the top teams that submit solutions and open source them. There are also some additional prizes in case you write a paper that will explain the approach that you took. The current state-of-the-art solutions for the ARC Prize involve programs that have no AI in them whatsoever, as well as an AI system that fine-tunes an AI model on the fly based on the examples that are shown for a particular ARC puzzle. So definitely very compute-intensive, and even that model only performs at 34% success rate. The competition has just started and will remain open until November, so you can go check out the datasets that they have available and start playing around. 
To ensure that the challenge is fair, the team has constructed a private data set with their own arc puzzles that they're going to run through any sort of software that you submit to them. This is what's going to end up on the official leaderboard. If you do choose to apply, keep in mind there are some rules for the challenge, one of them being that you can't use public AI systems and access the internet in your program. There will also be a secondary leaderboard that allows you to use the internet, but that leaderboard doesn't have any official prizes associated with it. So definitely check out arcprize.org and see if you have what it takes to push the frontier of AI research. Thanks for watching. Take care.